All right, we're going to do a few more examples of double integrals in polar coordinates. Um, there's, there's so many different things we could do, only so many videos we can make, um, but let's try to get a few interesting ones in. Uh, here's one that you might have seen in Calc 2. This, uh, this four-leafed rose or four-leaf clover um, comes from this particular polar curve here. Okay, um, I've drawn it ahead of time. I've done an okay job of drawing it, I think. Right. Uh, so if you're trying to sketch this out, right, when theta is equal to zero, you're here, and, and as theta increases, heading towards pi over four, r shrinks down to zero. Um, then you keep going. In fact, r then becomes negative from pi over four to, to three pi over four, and you draw out this, this loop here. And then you go around, you do this one, you do this one, you go here, and finally you come back to the beginning. Okay. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the curve. Uh, you might ask questions like, um, let's say we want to find something like the, the area of this region D given by one, one loop, right? Well, we know that uh, the way you calculate the area of a region with a double integral is you simply integrate one, okay, with respect to area. What does that look like in polar coordinates? Well, remember that my area element in polar is r, dr, d theta. What are the range of values for r? Well, for any particular angle, you'll notice that we start at the origin, we go out until we hit the curve, right? You generate the, the entire region by drawing rays from the origin like this. Right, so for each value of theta, r starts at zero, ends at, well, it ends at the curve. It ends at cos two theta. And for which thetas do we do that? Well, for minus pi over four, two plus pi over four, okay? And so now we go ahead, we do the r integral first, right? The integral of r gives me one half r squared. And this might give you a result that looks familiar. Right? r squared being, well, cos 2 theta. So cos 2 theta squared, and then d theta, right? The lower limit is just zero, right? You might remember that one half r squared formula for finding polar area as, as a result that you saw in Calc 2, right? Finding the area for polar curves. Here you see it as a consequence of, of a double integral, okay? And then you can proceed from, from here, right? Uh, so if we, if we wanted to finish this off, do we? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Um, one half out front minus pi over four to pi over four. Um, that's cos squared 2 theta. We gotta, we gotta use a, an identity. That's gonna be 1 plus cos 4 theta over 2 d theta. So we're gonna get 1 over 4 and then theta plus 1 over 4 sine 4 theta, and we're going from minus pi over 4 to pi over 4. As usual, this part doesn't contribute, right, because you're going to get either pi or minus pi in your sine function. Sine is 0 at those points, so we just get pi over 4 or minus minus pi over 4. It's pi over 2 times a quarter, so we get pi over eight, and we're done, okay? Uh, we could similarly ask for something like the, the integral over d of, maybe we have something like a plane, right? Let's say, let's say we have something like one plus two x minus three y, okay? Now, if you're, um, if you're doing this integral and you, you don't want to work too hard, we might want to be smart about things, okay? Right? 
So first of all, integral of one. Well, we just did that, right? We know we can integrate term by term. We know that this part here is going to give me pi over eight. No sense doing it again. Um, what about the three y? Well, look at my region. It is symmetric across the x-axis, right? I have the part up here is the mirror image of the part down here, right? So every plus y up here has a minus y down there that's going to cancel with it. We know that this doesn't contribute, right, by symmetry. So the only thing that we really need to, to work out is it so that we know that this is going to be pi over 8 plus the integral over d of 2x. And 2x is what? Uh, x is r cos theta. And then we have our r dr d theta. Okay. Zero. Sorry, not zero. Um, minus pi over 4 pi over 4, 0 to cos 2 theta. All right. So now I might get to a point where I don't really want to finish this example because the integral gets kind of ugly. But let's at least see how we can set things up. And if I don't make it to the end, you can always ask Wolfram Alpha for the final answer. Um, r squared, so 2r squared, antiderivative gives me 2 thirds r cubed. So 2 thirds um, cos cubed 2 theta times cos theta times d theta. And that doesn't look fun, does it? Actually, it's not so bad. Um, Cos 2 theta, we know some identities for cos 2 theta. Cos 2 theta, I can write as cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. I can also write it as 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Or, and here's the one that I want, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Why do I want that? Because this is going to become 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, all cubed, and then cos theta, and then d theta, 2 over 3 out front, right? I know I'm being a little lazy here. Um, well, we can do that with a u sub, right? We can totally do a u substitution. We can, in fact, we can substitute this entire integrand, um, right? If u is equal to, and I'm going to let you finish this off, I think, but let me set it up for you. If u is equal to, oh, no, I can't quite, okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. I can't, it's not quite so easy. But if u is equal to sine theta, du is cos theta d theta. So what you're going to get is, well, we still have that pi over 8 along for the ride from this part. Two thirds out front. We're going to have 1 minus 2 u squared and then cubed du um, minus pi over 4 to pi over 4. Ah, well, here's an interesting thing. Um, oh, did I mess this up? Let's see. We might have to be careful about my substitution. Um, no, it's okay. I was worried that the two limits were going to be the same, but sine is odd. Um, we're all right. Um, sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And minus pi over, so that's minus root 2 over 2. Those are my, my limits of integration. Okay. That leaves you with this integral to do. I'm not going to do it because we're already running a little long on time for this video. Um, but how do, you, how do you take care of this? It's not so bad. Um, I mean, OK, there's that cube on the outside. But you know how to cube a binomial, right? You can just multiply this thing out. You've got a polynomial. You know how to do polynomials. You integrate term by term. The number is going to get a little bit ugly, um, but you can definitely do it. All right? Um, so we're going to leave it 
at that for today.